And now... The Hall of Fantasy. Welcome to the Hall of Fantasy. Welcome to the series of radio dramas dedicated to the supernatural, the unusual, and the unknown. Come with me, my friends. We shall descend to the world of the unknown and forbidden, down to the depths where the veil of time is lifted and the supernatural reigns as king. Come with me and listen to the tale of The Wild Huntsman. Never heard that sound before. It's so strange. Not like anything I've ever heard. It sounded like like one of those old horns which called people to the hunt. Listen. To what? Be quiet. Listen. Yes, I hear it too. It seems to be the sound of a horse approaching this camp. Maybe someone's in trouble. Or perhaps the horse was frightened by something. He's going to come right through the camp. In just a moment, the Hall of Fantasy will present The Wild Huntsman. And now for our story. An original tale of fantasy by Richard Thorne entitled The Wild Huntsman. There is an old legend about the Wild Huntsman. A spectral hunter of medieval legend, too, with a pack of spectral dogs, is said to frequent the forest occasionally appeared to mortals, and he is not only known to the literature of our language, but also in the myths and legends of several of the world's peoples. The strange thing about this legend, there are many countries which have the same types of folklore, but the stories are the same, up to a certain point. After that point is reached, these myths take different paths which never cross again. But this legend of the wild huntsman is the exception to the rule. For in every version I have come across, the tale is the same, almost word for word. It is a simple tale, whose basic motif is that if you meet him face to face, you will die. I was over at Jerry and Helen's place. Our conversation turned to hunting. We haven't been up hunting now in almost three years. You know, that's right. Ever since I was best man for you people. Say, that was over three years ago. <laughs> I can understand it, Vaughn. Back in those days at the U, those weekends up in the mountains were the things we lived the rest of the week for. Us. Isn't that the truth? I don't think we missed an opening day for deer season in four years. No, we didn't. Hey, do you remember old Fisher? Mm -hmm. That half breed who was a guide and who always wanted to take us where he said we could get our limit of game in a few hours. <laughs> yes, I remember well, him. Who could forget him? Well, I was walking down Main Street the other day, and who should stop me but Fisher? At first, I didn't remember his name. Then it came back to me who he was. He hasn't changed, has he? <laughs> Not a bit. <laughs> Where'd he want, Vaughn? Oh, the same thing. He said he'd be glad to guide us up to the mountains, <laughs> to the place where we could get our deer limit without any trouble. <laughs> That's right. The season does open about six days from now, doesn't it? What'd you tell him? Same thing I always used to tell him. Maybe we would. You know, I don't see why we can't. What do you mean? Oh, why can't we go up with him? I've got a few days coming. What about you, Vaughn? Uh, I guess I could squeeze a few days out of the old man. It'll be just like old times. Is it a deal, then? <laughs> it's fine with me. Helen, darling, what about you? Well, anything you say, they're only, uh... Uh, Only what, Helen? Well, what about those stories we used to hear about Fisher? What stories? Well, I remember one that used to go around the campus. They said that of, of those he guided, very few came back. Wait a minute. Yes, now I do remember. There were lots of stories about Fisher. There was one, something about some connection between Fisher and the wild huntsman. Forget how it goes. Well, the way I heard it was that Fisher happened to be up in the mountains hunting. It was out of season. They say that he met up with the wild huntsman, but bargained for his life by saying that he would lead occasional parties up into the huntsman's domain. The wild huntsman accepted the proposal, and Fisher lived. Those, um, those stories, they, they weren't true, were they? Of course not, darling. Stories abound to spring up about people like Fisher little man with a livid purple scar running across his cheek. Just as if it had been branded there. He always... 
And he always made me nervous. Oh, this whole thing, Helen, this whole folk legend which has sprung up about the so-called wild huntsman, there isn't anything to it. It's just a bunch of stories that they tell the newcomers out here. Well, I wouldn't be a bit surprised if there weren't a few people who hunt in that forbidden area and then tell the wild stories you've heard just to keep that part of the hunting ground to themselves. Well, what about it, Helen? Of course I'll go. Shall we have Fisher guide us, Ron? Why not? That's the only way he makes any money. Let's give him a break. The next day, I went to locate Fisher, and I found him in his room in one of those cheap hotels on 2nd South. Yes? Hey, it's Vaughn Steger. Just a minute. Come in. Oh, thanks, Fisher. You have to excuse the room, Mr. Steger. I ain't much for keeping the room clean. Okay. Sit, sit down, sit down. All right, you. Uh, what is it you wanted? Well, you've been telling me about this place up in the mountains for a number of years, Fisher. Well, you finally decided to take you up on it. You mean you want to go up there when the season opens? That's right. It cost you fifty dollars for me. We're prepared to pay it. Fine. When do you want to start up? The same morning the season opens. I guess that can be fixed. You got your own guns? Yep. Good. If you give me a little money, uh, I'll lay in a supply of grub. Uh, how long you want to stay up there? Only as long as it takes to get our deer. It might be three, maybe four days. That's okay with us. Uh, another thing, Mr. Steger. Yes. You can't go up in no car. Got to use horses. Well, I'm going to take you. There ain't no roads, only trails. And sometimes you have to leave the horses. We understand all that. In that case, I better start laying in the splash. Only, uh, only one thing, Fisher. Yeah. Do you know any of the stories concerning the wild huntsman? The what? Yeah, I heard some. You were connected with the stories I heard, Fisher. Stories about you leading hunters up into the mountains. Hunters who never return. Well, that ain't true, Mr. Steger. Ain't true at all. How did they start? Don't know. But take my word for it, Mr. Steger. It ain't true. What you heard about the wild huntsman. Back now to our story. An original tale of fantasy by Richard Thorne entitled The Wild Huntsman. The days passed quickly, and before we knew it, we were ready to leave. Fisher insisted upon getting his fee before the trip started, and though I had some misgivings, yet I could see no reason why he shouldn't receive it. We started out a few hours before the season officially opened. How long will it take us to get up to this place, you know, Fisher? We are here about the middle of the afternoon, maybe three, maybe four o'clock. But I should imagine that everyone else would have a head start on us. They're not in this section of the mountains. What do you mean by that? There ain't many people who come up here. Mark my words, you'll find more than you bargained for up there. How you doing, Vaughn? Fine. What about you, Helen? Oh, I think I'm going to enjoy this trip. Maybe. Maybe not. What'd you say, Fisher? Huh? Oh, I said she probably would enjoy the trip. <laughs> We stopped twice to eat and rest, and then continued on our way. I noticed that the woods were becoming thicker, and the farther on we went, the greener the color of the foliage became. Three times during the trip up there, we had to dismount and lead the horses over the trail. I looked at my watch and saw that it was almost 3.30. How much farther, Fisher? It's right around the bend in the trail up there. A little clearing with the stream not too far away. We can make camp there. It's right around the bend. Oh, I'm glad of that. I'm not as strong as it used to be. Oh, Helen's tired, and so am I. Uh, we won't be able to get in any hunting today, will we, Fisher? Depends on what you want to do. I think perhaps we should hold that off until early tomorrow morning. Anything you say, Mr. Steger. Oh, there's the campsite. Oh, 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 oh there. Why, it's beautiful, Fisher. Hey, big, but a few people up here to destroy the looks of the land. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, oh. oh, I've never seen anything so beautiful. That's just what I told Fisher. You know, it was worth it. Just to see this place. Well, might as well just smile. Try be our hope for a while. Uh, all right. Okay. We made camp and set up the tents. 
Helen and Jerry shared one tent, I the second, and Fisher just used a bed roll. Evidently, he was used to sleeping out in the open. Occasionally, as the wind changed, the sound of the little stream would be brought to our ears. It was about 9.30. The campfire threw shadows against the trees which surrounded the little clearing. We sat around the fire. The crackle of the burning wood was pleasant to the ear, and the clean, pungent smell of it filled the camp. I didn't realize I was so tired. Oh, dear, Jerry. Something so nice and peaceful about this place. Well, I think I'm going to wear you now. What was that? It sounded like a wolf. We're up pretty far, you know. It sounds so eerie up here in the woods. There's nothing to worry about, darling. Well, uh, I suppose you're right, Jerry. It's just a dead up. Never heard that sound before. It's so strange. Not like anything I've ever heard. It sounded like like one of those old horns which called people to the hunt. Listen. To what? Be quiet, listen. Yes, I hear it too. It seems to be the sound of a horse approaching this camp. Maybe someone's in trouble. Perhaps the horse is frightened by something. He's gonna come right through the camp. You. Fine. Go on. Oh. I'm okay. What was it, Fisher? I think his horse, whoever it was, was, was frightened by the wolf cow. His horse? It was all black. Did you get a look at the rider? No. It was so sudden, I didn't even think about it. I imagine he'll be able to slow his horse down. And you don't think he'll need any help from us? No. No, he won't need any help from us. the hour grew later, a small wind sprang up and sounded its way through the branches of the trees and foliage surrounding us. It was a quiet and restful sound. At about 10.30, we all retired. I don't know about the others, but I fell asleep upon the instant. Once or twice during the night, I thought I heard the sound of that animal again as its cry echoed across the distance. In the morning, I awoke completely refreshed. As I dressed, I could smell the odor of bacon and eggs frying over an open fire. The others were about gathering wood, putting the camp in order. After we'd had breakfast, I think we'd better break up into two parties. Uh, you have a compass with you, haven't you, Mr. Steger? Yes. Uh, you take the lady with you. He said uh, he wants to go with me today. Yeah, that's right, Vaughn. You can go off to Fisher tomorrow. Well, that's fine with me. You strike out due north, Mr. Steger. Uh-huh. We'll go the other way. Now, don't go too far, though. You might get lost. <laughs> don't worry. We won't go too far. <laughs> that's good. Now, well, let's get started. All right. Bye. Bye. They left camp before we did. A few minutes after we had seen them disappear down the trail, we started out. Our course was due north which happened to cross the little stream. There was a sort of trail through the trees, and we followed it until we came to the stream. That rider must have crossed the stream right about here last night. Yes, you're right. I wonder who he was. Mm. I hope he was able to stop his horse. Fisher seemed to think he would. But that horn again. Yes. It seemed to be quite far away. Well, then... Shall we go on? Yeah, I might as well. Now, that log lying across the stream, we ought to be able to cross the stream on that. Go on. Wait a minute. That sounds like a horse. It is. What? Over there, see? There's a, there's a black dog running along the couch. Oh, okay. Well, what is? You'll know in a minute. He's coming right there. Hold on. Hold that. Hello there. Hi. Don't see many people up here. I guess not. And in lot, uh, we were just starting out. Quiet night. Hey, you must excuse my dog. He's not used to strangers. I think. Been here long? Um, we arrived here yesterday afternoon. I, uh, I rode over to apologize to you. I was out riding last night. Some animal howled and frightened my horse. 
ran away with me, and I'm afraid I disturbed you. Uh, no damage, I hope. No, there was no damage. Good. I imagine Fisher guided you up here? Yes, he did. Good hunting country. Not many know the way up here, but Fisher does. <laughs> it brings quite a few people up here. I imagine you've heard those nonsensical stories about a spectral hunter, haven't you? Yes. <laughs> Fisher doesn't seem to believe them, does he? Evidently, you people don't either. It is nonsense, of course. After all, no one's ever seen the wild huntsman and lived to tell about it. Back now to our story. An original tale of fantasy by Richard Thorne, entitled The Wild Huntsman. Helen and I stood there, looking up at the black-clothed man who sat astride a cold black horse. On the ground beside the horse stretched a dog. There was something strange about the three of them, as if they came from another world. One other thing... I hope you'll forgive me if I impose upon you. Certainly. Well, then, tell Fisher for me that Hunter wants to see him. Where? He knows where to find me. Just give him the message. If you will. We will. Excellent. Well, goodbye. I imagine I'll be seeing you again. Of course. <laughs> trailed closely by the gigantic black dog, galloped away. He seemed to be a nice enough fellow, but there was something about him which made me feel uneasy. Helen and I continued the hunt, but with no luck. We returned to the camp cold and disgusted. We wondered why Jerry and Fisher weren't there, but then surmised that if they had had any success, they'd make slow progress back to camp. They came in about two. Helen, look at the size of that deer. Hey, they made up for what we didn't oh. get. Hey, Jerry, good shooting, fella. Oh. <laughs> What's the biggest I've ever seen? Why, look at that. You've been stuck with one shot. Oh, I've oh, forgotten how to shoot him. Put him down. 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 Put him Put him down. Put him down. Put him down. Put him down. Why didn't you tell us you knew him? I, I wasn't sure who it was. Well, we met him today. A man on a black horse? Yes. Said he wanted to see you. That you knew where to meet him. Said his name was Hunter. Oh, yeah. Mr. Hunter. I'll be back in a while. I don't want him getting angry. He's like... Like a devil. When he's angry. Oh! We didn't think that Fisher would be gone long, and yet, when night fell and there was still no sign of him, we began to get worried. It was about nine o'clock. Fisher had been gone for almost seven hours. I wonder where he is. We should get back. He's been gone for almost seven hours. Well, he knows how to take care of himself. A wolf out in those woods somewhere. Well, there's something about this place. Beautiful and... And yet it's so quiet. A place where a man doesn't belong. No, Helen. Man does belong here. He came out of the forest himself. Yes, but when he left them, he gave them up. But we don't belong here. The wilderness belongs to the animals, to, to the creatures of... Listen. The horn again. I wonder who... What was that? I don't know. It sounded like... Like the scream of a human being. Wasn't too far away. Maybe we better go take a look. You're right. Get your flashlight. Right. Stay here, Helen. We'll be right back. All right. All right, here's the road again. It's three. Shine your light around. Yeah. I don't see you to be anything. Just a minute. What's that over there? Take a look. Good heavens. You don't think I can tell. Take a look at his face. It's Fisher. He's dead. Look at his cheek. Yes, I see it too. The black figure. The man on the horse. to get him back to camp. They had to tell Helen that he was dead, though I would have preferred that she hadn't known. 
We talked it over and decided to go back in the morning to call an end to this ill-fated hunting party. We decided to divide the night up into shifts at which one of us would stand guard. I drew the first shift. I sat by the fire, occasionally feeding it, feeling alone, terribly alone. Who's that girl? Yes, we. In a way, I'm glad. It's lonely here alone. Fall asleep? Yes, good. Go on. Yes? Do you think there's any truth to that? Wild huntsman legend? I don't know. The mark on Fisher's face, how can you explain that? I don't know that either. The stories I'd heard. Fisher made a sort of pact with him. Why should Fisher die? Maybe he made a... Maybe he made a mistake. Maybe this thing intends making a new pact with someone else. We're the only ones up here. Yeah, I know. Wolf's awfully close. Got your gun. Yeah. You realize that every time we've heard that wolf howl, something's happened? Oh, I wish the morning would come. I wish we'd never started off. Helen, come on. You don't think? We'll see you in a minute. Something's happened to her. Helen. Helen! Jerry. Jerry, we have to do something. She's dead. She's dead, Jerry. We have to think of some way to save our own lives. What? <laughs> That is quite true, my dear sir. You. Where did you come from? Makes no difference. This is my domain. You do not belong here. You have trespassed where you do not belong. For that you shall die. If I do, I'll take you with me. to Helen after she screamed we'd carried our rifles with us. Jerry raised his and fired. What happened then I still don't know. I was sure that the bullet had hit Hunter and yet he didn't fall. But something happened to Jerry. He screamed and fell lifeless to the ground. Hunter stands there watching me in these last few minutes. All this, the complete story has gone through my mind. I, I'm afraid terribly afraid. There's no need to be afraid. You will live, but on one condition, and that is, Fisher made a pact with me. You will do the same. No, I won't hurt, my dear sir. You must. Fisher was getting old, not quite as useful as he once had been. But you, you will live and bring more like you here to me. Just as Fisher did. Out to the forest. In my domain. Out to the realm of the wild huntsman. The unusual, the terrifying, the unknown. Join us again when next we journey down the corridors of the Hall of Fantasy to hear another strange tale of the supernatural. All characters and events portrayed in these programs are fictional, and any similarity to actual events or persons, living or dead, is purely coincidental. <laughs>